Hey, what's up? Scott Balkum here with Imagination Creation Films, and today we're taking a deep look into the Port Keys Lie SDI EVF. Get it? Yeah. So before we get started, Port Keys did send this EVF out to me for review, but as always, my opinions are my own and Port Keys has no say in the review whatsoever. So let's talk about who this EVF is for. This CVF is for people who want to add on an EVF but are tied on a budget, and you likely want the flexibility that an EVF gives when shooting. Now that flexibility is, well, the ability to take out distractions from your visual field and concentrate on the image that you're capturing, and that's exactly why so many love using EVFs. Now, this EVF is not likely going to replace your current EVF. I can say this because, well, there isn't an EVF on the market that's this affordable, and with affordability comes compromise. Now, there's nothing wrong with compromise. Life is a balance, and it's full of compromises. But with compromise, you trade some things that you want for things that you need. And as we go through this review, I'll let you know where you may compromise and well, where you don't. So what is the Port Keys Lie SDI? It's an affordable electronic viewfinder that packs a bunch of features in a silent plastic package. It has both SDI and HDMI inputs and can run from a Canon LPE6 battery or a DTAP connection to a external battery. It can accept up to 4K30 through HDMI, although I'd tell you just feed it 1080p and be happy. It has a lot of the tools you would normally want, focus peaking, waveforms, zebra, false color, some grids and guides, LUTs, histogram and focus assist. And the display inside, it's a 2.4 inch LCD that has a native resolution of 1440 by 900. It's not full 1080. The eye cup has an adjustable diopter for people with glasses and for people with various levels of vision. <laughs> uh, it has a locking four pin DTAP power connection, or you can use the Canon LPE6 batteries. It has four customizable preset buttons and an on-off switch. Now to mount it, it has a NATO rail on the bottom and several quarter 20 threaded holes. Now I mentioned it is silent and it is completely. It is a passive cooling EVF. And if you've ever experienced almost every other EVF on the market, you know that they typically use fans and some can be quite noticeable. The port keys, not noticeable, no sound, and that's very nice. Now, you can load LUTs through the USB port, which is very much appreciated today, and overall, it's relatively small in size. Now, the menu system is usable and understandable. Let's take a look at some of the feature sets in the software. A quick note, the EVF design makes it very difficult to capture what the LCD display actually looks like to your eye. Uh, this is not very representative of the display uh, in, in full honesty. It, this makes it look really noisy and uh, distorted, and it's not that bad at all. It, it looks very similar to a port keys monitor as far as color and crispness and such. But you know, you see the, the bow on it and that's 100% how I'm capturing it. So keep that in mind. This is a menu walkthrough, not a quality of the EVF. <laughs> so there's four function keys on the top and you could program each of these to do a specific function. I've got F1 set to zoom. So you can zoom in to help you pull focus. F2, I've got peaking on and that's configurable how you want the peaking to show up. F3, I've got false color and you can see your IRE values at the bottom. Um, and that's pretty standard, although the colors are not exactly matching everybody else, but really no one has a standard for that either. And now let's go through the menu itself. You click menu one time, you get your input. If you click menu again, you can choose between HDMI and your SDI. Then we have our guides set up so we can turn guides on and off. You can configure how you want them to be and there's several of them programmed in there, or you can do customs. Uh, it's quite versatile on that and quite handy. And then uh, you can also turn on your crosshairs. So if you want a crosshair in the middle, you can do that. And uh, the grids also. 
can turn different grids there if you want the standard three. You can do that. And uh, let's go back to there. Video config is where you can adjust the actual settings of the the EVF itself. I have the backlight turned up right now uh, so that it gets enough light into the, um, the lens here, but I run that actually about 50% for my eyes. Go down to system config. We can get change uh, our language. We can change the duration, the menu setup. You can have set, uh, set up custom for you. Um, you can have the waveform source, uh, you can have it load the LUT or not load the LUT, which is nice. You can also do some flips, although not every flip, just horizontal and vertical, um, which is you know pretty typical. Back, and then we're gonna go back. You can turn your voltage on here. Uh, LUT config, so you can load LUTs from USB here and uh, you can store them. And then we have the function set up. So here you can choose what you want on each of the function buttons. So here we can choose between zooming, luma waveform, histogram, underscan, zebra, I'm not gonna read them all off. You can see all the variety of options that you can turn on and off on each of these as, uh, as you want them to. Let's take that back to zooming and uh, and a little away from there and then you can of course upgrade your firmware and yeah that is that is basically it it is it is simple you got the voltage at the top left which i turned on and uh let's throw it back to me so that's what the evf has for features now let's talk about compromise now this evf retails at only 549 dollars and that's remarkably affordable for an EVF with both SDI and HDMI. But the first compromise is the EVF build. This is made almost entirely of plastic. The case is plastic, the buttons are plastic, the NATO rail is plastic. And I'm willing to bet that the diopter is plastic. More on that in a second. The eye cup is just foam. It's not memory foam or high density foams, just simple foam. It has an eye cup cover that is foam with a cloth attached as a hinge. Well, you can secure the cover to the EVF using Velcro. Now, when you rotate your diopter, so each time you change users, the, uh, the eye cover has to move with it. You need to take off the foam from the eye cup from the Velcro and reattach it so that you can align the cover with the Velcro. And I mean, this is a pretty cheap design, but honestly, it's not horrible. It functions and it isn't uncomfortable. It's just basic. <laughs> the NATO rail is plastic and not aluminum. So your confidence in it, it may be low initially, but in fairness, this entire unit weighs just over eight ounces, so it's not exactly stressing plastic. It's, it's fine. It's just not what you typically see, and well, that's a compromise. The color of the display in the EVF is okay. You're not gonna make color decisions with it, and you really shouldn't with any EVF, but some do. Brightness, well, it's really good. It, I didn't feel like I needed more, only sometimes less, which you can adjust in the menu. It doesn't have any outputs, so you can't loop video connections from this unit. The biggest compromise of all though, the diopter. Now, I'm almost certain it is plastic and it's not awesome. You have to keep your eye centered on the eye cup. Any deviation will take your image out of focus and cause artifacting to most of your eye. Now, it's not hard to keep your eye centered. It's just not flexible with eye placement or forgiving at all. Uh, add in that this isn't a full 1080p LCD panel and you're gonna need to really concentrate when you focus. And well, this is my biggest gripe with the EVF. It's usable, just not optimal. 
you can focus with it. it it's, it's not impossible. It's, it's actually better than 720p's. It's just not all the pixels of a 1080, so understand that. Now, these are the compromises you make to get an extremely affordable price. If you have a red Komodo or similar style camera and you want an EVF, but just aren't sure if you're going to use it enough to justify spending thousands on one, then this is an EVF that you should look at. And if you, like so many, saved and saved to finally enter the red ecosystem with the red Komodo and want to add an EVF, but you just don't have a ton of cash, this is an EVF worth looking at. Now, if you have an EVF and are looking to upgrade, this is very likely not the EVF for you. This is an entry level EVF with some fairly nice and usable features at the lowest price I've ever seen. It's silent, it's capable, it's functional, it's quirky, and it's affordable. It's an EVF with some compromises, but it's not a compromised EVF. So what are the pros and cons? The pros, it's affordable, like really affordable for an EVF. It has the most useful set of video tools you need. It's lightweight and it's completely silent. What are the cons? Well, the NATO rail is an optimal. It's ever so slightly larger than standard, so you end up having to open your clamps just a little wider than you would with others. The diopter, it's not fantastic. It's, it's nothing to get excited about, it's just okay. It's usable, but okay. The LCD, it's not a full 1080p panel. You can pull focus with it. It's just not as high res as, well, you'd like. The price of $549 is pretty darn low, but maybe, just maybe, there's a limited time better deal to be had in the Red Komodo Users Group on Facebook. Hint, hint, hint. So what do you think of the EVF? Have you been looking to get an EVF but didn't want to spend a lot of money? Is this something that checks your boxes? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about this EVF. I'd love to know and have a conversation about it. And as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life, let your life center around your passions.